What is going on YouTube? Today I'll be showing you how to create a dynamic chart in React using Apex Charts. Now with this chart here, what I'm doing is I am getting live data in real time and I'm updating this graph as I'm getting new data points. And so if this is what you want to do in your application, please like, comment, subscribe because I'm about to show you exactly how I did it with Apex Charts. And hopefully by the end of this video, you should have all the tools you need to tailor it to your application and start viewing data smoothly and nicely in real time using Apex Charts. So enough being said, let's jump into it. Okay, so jumping into the React side of things, I'm just gonna make two assumptions for this video. The first one is you have a React project set up and you know how to get to one set up. And the second thing is that you have some mechanism to stream data to your front end real time. In this case, I'm using sockets, but I'm not gonna go into detail about that. Now, other than that, what you want to do is you want to NPM install React Apex charts and Apex charts, and you want to import them into your project. Next, going into your functional component, what you want to do is you want to create these three variables here. If you're not using sockets, you don't have to use this. But for the first one, um, I added this pause data. This is a Boolean tied to this button right here. As you could see, that allows me to pause the data stream. So if I don't want to, if I don't want to get updates in my, in my front end, I can actually pause this and prevent the updates from this graph. That's just a, a nice icing on the cake. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I thought it was just a nice touch if you want to momentarily pause the graph. Secondly, you're gonna to want to add some mechanism to store the data. So I just used a list. My first data point is just x equals zero, y equals zero, but you can adjust that accordingly to your application's needs. Next, we have the props we have to define for our Apex charts. So Apex charts takes two important props, which is the series and the options. So first in the series, we just define the name of the series, which I just called mine acceleration because I'm getting acceleration data and you just pass the data stream. Secondly, you have the options here. So the options are essentially just the styling options for the graph. And of course, in there you have the chart ID. So this chart ID is important. You can name whatever ID you want. I just called it real time because it's a real time graph, but just know this ID is important later on and I'll show you why that is in a second. The next thing we have is a type. Mine is just a line as you saw before, but you can also have bar graphs, pie charts, all other sorts of charts. So just important to know that if the line graph does not suit your application, just know there are many styling options to read about in the Apex charts, which I'll link the documentation in the description below. Now here I have the animations, which just dictates the animation across the screen, how the line is moving across the screen, how fast it's moving and those sorts of things. Next thing I have is this toolbar property, which I define as true. So this toolbar is just this guy in the top right here where I can zoom in and zoom out the graph, maybe pan across the graph if I like to. So that's just a nice feature you can add if you'd like. Now I also enable data labels. So data labels are just the labels on the graph here. So as you can see, I have those square labels. Those are the data labels. You can enable those if you want to. Another thing I have, which is really important is the stroke of the graph. So this is this is what dictates the connection between each subsequent point. So you can see the points are connected in a smooth fashion, so the line is smooth, but you don't have to do it like that. There's many types of curves you can connect. I believe there's straight curves and step line curves. So more about that in the documentation as well. Now, of course, we have the title of the graph. So we just have the text and the alignment. So I just called mine MPU650, which is the name of my sensor that I'm using. And you can see it's in the top left there. So that's pretty straightforward, I hope. And also we have markers. The, the markers define the size of the bullet point here or each point of data. So that's actually covered by the labels that you can't see right now. But if you didn't have labels and you increase the size of the marker, you would see it. So I should probably go ahead and comment that out, but I just kept it. And then we have the X axis properties. So X axis properties is also important because this defines the range of data points you'll see at any given time on the screen. So I defined a range of 30. So I can only see data points within a range of 30. So if I scroll down here, you'll see that the distance between this left point, which is 501 right now, to this is 531. So that makes sense. There's only 30 um, essentially ticks on the bottom here where I can see data points anywhere in between at any given time. So, I mean, ideally, if you increase the range, the more data points you'll see on the screen. And of course, my numbers are numeric, but you can also have date time uh, variables and that sort of thing. Next, we have the y-axis here, which just dictates the range of the y-axis. Mine is negative two to two because those are the range of my acceleration values, the predicted acceleration values. So I know they're going to be between negative two and two. Now, also what I define here is I define this function append data, which essentially just takes data from my data stream and appends it to this list above here. And once there's a change in that data stream, the graph will know and update accordingly. What's important about this function is I added the capability to start truncating after I get a thousand data points. So I didn't want to have any memory issues and a, th a thousand data points was fine for my application's sake. But what I did in this scenario was if I received more than a thousand data points, I start truncating the oldest data points just for the sake of uh, saving memory in my application. So you might want to do that. And this is a good mechanism to do that here with this function, but you don't need that if you want to, if you have a very limited amount of data points or you have the capabilities to store very large amounts of data points. 
Now what's really important here is you want to use a react use effect and ignore this socket stuff if you're not using sockets, but you want to call this apex chart.exec real time update series. So as you can see here, I mentioned the ID was important. So we pass in the ID of the chart to this function and we pass in the data stream. This is really important in allowing us to get a smooth transition of data points across the screen as we get new data points. So if you actually go ahead and comment this out, you'll notice some weird behavior in terms of how your graph is updating across the screen. So just know this is important in terms of updating the series in a smooth manner. Okay, now I have another if statement here. Once again, if you're not using the pause data functionality or sockets, you can just ignore this. And finally, what we have here is we just call the, or we just throw the components in a div. So we have the chart component, which I just pass series and options, and I pass the height. So that's just the size on the page. And of course, I also have the button here. So this is the button that allows me to pause the data. So that's pretty much it in terms of the code aspect of it. And once again, I'll show you the graph one more time after all this. So you can see it's still moving a line and getting updates in real time. So if you like this video and you found it useful for your application, please like, comment, subscribe. I thought it was a really cool and easy way to get dynamic charts in React, and I hope you did as well. So if you enjoyed it, please, please subscribe and let me know if you have any comments in the section below and let me know if you have any questions as well. So stay tuned, guys, and thanks for watching.